Good evening and welcome to our Board of Commissioner meeting for October 20th. We have a couple of committee uh, items before we get to our Board of Commissioners um, uh, actual meeting. Uh, we have Finance, Administrative and uh, Human Resource Committee as well as at our Police Committee. Uh, and uh, we will be fairly prompt this evening and I do promise you that nobody will say the name Ben Simmons. With that, we will start uh, with the Finance Committee and we will recognize. Thank you, uh, President Simmons and Bernheim. Um, so uh, tonight there are three items on the Finance Committee agenda. Uh, the first item is for this committee to consider awarding a contract for recycling services. Uh, I think uh, the numbers we, we will look at in this bid are the opposite of what we typically look at and uh, I'll ask our chief financial officer who is with us via Zoom to explain this to us. Eric. All right, good evening commissioner. So as uh, Commissioner Zeloff alluded to, this is kind of the opposite of the normal process when we look at bids. Normally we're looking at how much money we're going to spend. Fortunately, tonight we're going to talk about how much money we'll get due to these bids. Uh, it's also kind of the opposite from the discussions we had in September regarding the trash hauling contract. Um, this is going to have uh, hopefully a financial benefit uh, to the solid waste fund. Um, so overall, we received very positive results uh, due to commodity prices. Um, as we talked about in September, those have really um, changed for the benefit of the township. Um, hopefully they will stay that way for a while. Um, but um, these commodity markets do tend to move and move rapidly. If you recall the, the chart I showed you back in September, that kind of looked like a, an EEG or EKG or wh whatever that acronym is that goes up and down and up and down. Um, so to briefly touch, when you look at the bid tab, when you, what you see there is you see there's a, a given commodity price, and that's kind of basically the, the current commodity pricing level. And then what the bidder does is for the commingled, uh, they bid an amount. That's their fixed cost. So then that is subtracted from the commodity values. What we're left with is the residual time or tonnage, which gives us a potential revenue from commingled. Um, in the uh, paper area, it's actually even better because there's a, again, a commodity price. And then the fixed price, because they're getting so much for paper right now, is actually in addition to the uh, commodity price. So those numbers for paper, if they came true at over $550,000, we've never seen numbers close to that. Um, I don't even think we've broached in a year 300,000, at least in, in, my, in my tenure here. Um, we did also have an option um, for single stream recycling. Uh, the issue for with single stream recycling is, is more from a, a financial perspective um, what happens is you tend to have a much larger percentage of what they call residue, which basically is the mix of all the recyclables tends to damage the value of the paper from a commodity perspective. So what you end up with is less valuable recyclables on the secondary market. What that means is you get less money. Um, even if you were to double the commodity value that you see in single stream and you know reduce the tonnage, it still ends up uh, nowhere near the actual um, financial benefit that the dual stream system provides to the township. So um, when you look at this, it, it's, it's overall good results for the township. Um, we didn't have a lot of competition. We don't typically have a lot of competition with this bid though. Um, and there's been consolidation in this industry even more so recently. Um, but generally we've had uh, good success operationally with these vendors. Uh, we're happy to continue it. Again, um, there's no given that we're going to receive these revenue numbers. These commodities uh, markets change daily uh, and per our contract, uh, some of them change what they pay us on a quarterly and some on a monthly basis. But um, hopefully it will be a positive uh, to the um, solid waste fund, could be as much as four to $500,000. Uh, and overall, we recommend moving forward with the uh, award of this contract. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Eric. Um, can you tell us, do you know that since these uh, bids were opened uh, a few weeks ago, and in the case of uh, paper, I think it's from the, the price, is it from August? Have the prices, how have they changed since then? I believe Mingled has stayed, <coughs> excuse me, 
I believe commingled has stayed relatively the same. Paper has actually gone up a slight, um, a little bit more since then. Great, thanks very much. Do members have any questions or comments for our chief financial officer? Seeing none, uh, do any members of the public have any comments on this item? Seeing none, uh, this is very good news for the finances of the township and certainly for our recycling services and the, um, the incentive for all community members to continue to recycle uh, uh, to the greatest extent possible within the, the guidelines that we provide uh, and for a recycling tonnage to go up. That's good for the township. It's good for the environment. And so I will uh, make the following motion that this uh, finance committee recommend to the Board of Commissioners the approval uh, to, and to award a contract for recycling services to the following bidders in accordance with the bids received on Thursday, October 7th. 2021 and the recommendation of the chief financial officer and with the approval of the director of public works that's for solid waste services doing business as jp mascaro uh, uh, option one total lump sum bid commingled of sixty thousand six hundred and six dollars and newman and company option two total lump sum bid for paper of uh, five hundred eighty five thousand thirty nine dollars is there a second? Second from Vice President Gavron. Uh, all committee members in favor, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Madam Secretary, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Second item on the Finance Committee's agenda tonight is the award of a contract, consider consideration, consideration of the awarding of a contract um, to Jimmy's Tree and Landscaping Contractors, LLC, for the removal of dead and diseased trees. And for that, I will call again on our Chief Financial Officer to provide more information. Uh, very simple one here. We had five bidders. We have a clear low bidder. Uh, the rough budget, according to our shade tree supervisor that he had in his head for this contract was roughly $50,000. So we're a little bit below that. So that's good news. Uh, this vendor has won multiple tree removal contracts with the township. I think they're on a streak of at least maybe four or five bids in a row that they've won. Um, so we have no issue with moving forward. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Eric. Uh, questions or comments from committee members? <laughs> Seeing none, uh, comments from members of the public. Seeing none, I'll move that this committee recommend to the Board of Commissioners the approval uh, of a contract for dead and diseased tree removal uh, to Jimmy's Tree and Landscaping Contractors, LLC, from their bids, from the bids received on Thursday, October 14th, 2021. Uh, and that includes the recommendation of the Chief Financial Officer and the approval of the Director of Public Works in the amount of $42,150. Do I have a second? Uh, Commissioner Whalen seconds, thank you very much. Uh, commissioners, uh, committee members in favor, uh, so indicate by raising your hand. Uh, any uh, any committee members in opposition or abstention? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, we're two for two with another unanimous approval. Thank you. Third and final item tonight for the Finance Committee is again in the opposite direction. Uh, this would be uh, that we consider awarding a contract for planting trees, presumably in a uh, similar amount to those that we would be removing in the prior contract. Uh, tree planting at various township locations uh, with a proposed award to J. Um, Mar Garrison Landscaping Inc. Eric, can you tell us more? Yes, yeah, so th this contract is actually for uh, approximately um, what we were thinking is 100 trees, which is actually more than it was in that removal co uh, contract you just uh, spoke about. But the reason being is we're trying to kind of catch up. Uh, we've done a fair amount of removals in recent years of dead and diseased trees. Um, and as part of a multi-year plan to kind of catch up on tree plantings, um, we've gone from basically uh, spending enough to uh, do this contract annual via quote. So basically there'd be about a $20,000 limit to what we would do uh, to actually doing an actual formal public bid award. When you look at the bid tab, just so that you actually understand what you're looking at, um, you know, 
everyone to be qualified for this had to put in a bid on each type of tree. So basically only the one bidder uh, you see here, uh, Jay Madgerson is the only one who actually fulfilled that. Uh, secondly, when you actually look at um, what the overall cost will be, uh, basically they're saying they're just gonna give us each tree, any type of tree for $350 times 100 trees. So we're looking at $35,000. Uh, so when you look at any of the other bids that were even incomplete, um, the prices are as low as 440 to as much as 585. Um, so that would be, you know, uh, 44,000 to 500 or to uh, uh, 58,500 for those bidders. So we're definitely getting the lowest bidder. And it's also a vendor that uh, Shatria has worked with for a couple of years uh, and had good success with. Uh, so we recommend moving forward with this one as well. Thank you very much, Eric. Do committee members have any questions or comments on this item? Commissioner Courtney. Thank you, Commissioner Zola. Uh, Eric, I've gotten uh, concerns from residents around the township that some of the trees we've planted have been planted incorrectly and are not likely to survive. Do we have anything in the contract uh, around requirements for planting and or survival of the trees for a certain period? Um, I believe there is requirements regarding initial planting, watering, and at least a, an initial maintenance. Uh, but any concerns such as that should really be directed to the shade tree division. Um, so they can review those plantings. I'm clearly not an arborist. Um, and, and they can hopefully then address those issues. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Courtney. Any other members of this committee with comments or questions? Seeing none, do any members of the public have any uh, comments or questions. Um, sure. Commissioner Churchill, thank you for uh, uh, raising your hand. Um, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, if a citizen is interested in a getting a new tree, do they apply to the Shade Tree Commission? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know if our, our manager does. Obviously, I, I would have to be in the right of way for these plantings. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Manager McNeely has anything to say on that. Uh, Commissioner, if, if, some, if a resident is interested in a street tree, they would contact the Shade Tree Division. They don't have to go to the, wait for a Shade Tree Commission meeting. They could go right to the director of the Shade Tree Division, and, and he would see if it works on the list. Uh, of course, they have to check for utilities and all that sort of thing as to whether it's feasible. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Just a reminder, Commissioner Courtney, uh, recent budget hearings actually about increasing the number of trees over the next, uh, at least in the next budget cycle. So, um, you know, if there are residents out there who are looking for trees um, and they contact change, and they'll probably be looking for locations in places. So hopefully that works out. Commissioner Churchill, our township arborist is Joe Marco. And so he's the specific individual that a resident should contact or perhaps can do so with your assistance. Uh, Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments from committee members, including those uh, on Zoom? Seeing none, do any members of the public who are here with us tonight have any questions or comments on this item? Seeing none, I will move that this committee recommend to the Board of Commissioners the approval of an award for tree planting at various township locations to J. Margerson Landscaping, Inc. Uh, in accordance with the bids received on Thursday, October 14th, 2021, and the recommendation of the Chief Financial Officer with the approval of the Director of Public Works in the amount of $35,000. Do I have a second from Commissioner McComb? I do. All those members of the committee who are in favor, please raise your hand. Any committee members have any uh, any wish to vote in the negative? Seeing none, any abstentions? Seeing none. Uh, that passes unanimously, Madam Secretary uh, and President Bernheim. That concludes the business of the Finance Committee for this evening. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Zella. We'll consider that one a layup. And <laughs> that then brings us to our, our, our next uh, committee meeting of the Administrative and Human Resource Committee. And we will recognize uh, its chair, um, Commissioner Churchill. But um, I have received a technical text that for Zoom, Commissioner Zeloff was not on during that time, just myself. But I'm looking at the TV 
which had before Commissioner Zeloff. So if we can get in touch with whomever we have to get in touch. I can give you an explanation of that. So Zoom is running through that camera in the back of the room. That camera is also being used by LMTV for their broadcast. So along with other cameras in the room. So whatever that camera is focused on is what the people on Zoom will see. Okay, well, um, fair enough. Commissioner Churchill. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we only have one agenda item this evening, and that is the appointment of a director of parking services. So I would like to consider for approval confirmation of the appointment of the township manager of Gerald G. Adams to the position of director of parking services effective October 25th, 2021. Do I have a second? Many seconds. Thank you very much. Um, is there, a, I don't know, Ernie, would you like to make, make any comments about uh, this appointment? Uh, thank yeah. you, uh, Commissioner. Uh, uh, I've nominated Jerry Adams, uh, who has uh, 35 years of experience with the uh, township. Uh, Jerry uh, might be known to most of you as the voice of uh, road closings on uh, the Blackboard Connect system. Uh, uh, Jerry works currently as our utility coordinator in our public works department, uh, but uh, we are really looking forward to having Jerry take over in the parking department, which uh, has been missing a director for a period of time. Uh, Jerry is here tonight if you would like him to say a few words, uh, but I'm very happy to nominate him for your consideration. Uh, before I have commissioner comments, are there any public comments? Uh, seeing none, uh, commissioner comments. I'll be ever so brief. Yes. One, Jerry, I don't know if you wanted to say something, we'd give you that opportunity. You're not required, but you're more than welcome. And all I was going to state is that any of us who have worked with you, and that would be all of us that are really <laughs> pleased to see this, the only negative is who's going to fill your shoes now? <laughs> so, you know, thank you and, you know, please. Well, good evening, you. everybody, and thank you very much for the consideration. Um, a lot of people may not realize uh, I'm defined by two places. Uh, Belmont Hills, where I grew up, and the rest of Lower Marion Township. Uh, I started here at 17 years old in the refuse department. Uh, the township invested in me. Uh, it took me 12 years uh, at night to gain my degree in public administration from Westchester University. Uh, in 1999, I graduated with honors from Westchester. Uh, the township helped significantly uh, financially. Uh, so that investment is time for me to start uh, having that investment uh, pay off for the township. Uh, I hope it has a little so far in the 35 years I've already contributed to the township. Uh, I am truly excited to join you as representing the township, uh, as senior staff, and as represent representatives of the township. Uh, I'd like to say a special thank you to Frank Thomas uh, and the parking services crews. There's three divisions down there. Uh, they've done an excellent job keeping things afloat uh, uh, with efficiency. Uh, and I look forward to hopefully improving that efficiency uh, and doing it with a fiscal uh, and sensible responsibility to the residents and to the commissioners. Uh, I came here hoping uh, to be confirmed as the parking director. And if I leave, I will be very grateful to be the parking director. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Commissioner Durbin. You need to get on mute. Okay, good. All right, I would just like to say that um, I'm extremely pleased at this nomination. Um, I'm a little bit nervous that Mr. Adams feels that he needs to develop more gray hairs, but um, I think he's gonna be a great candidate and hope that he um, will enjoy the job. Thank you. And any other commissioner comments? I see none, but I'm sure there has to be more. Seeing none, uh, then let's go to a vote. All those in favor of appointing a new director of parking services. Uh, 
Please say aye. Raise your hand. Those opposed? No abstentions. I believe that it's a unanimous and uh, President Bernheim, that concludes the agenda for uh, human services. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Churchill. Congratulations, Jerry. And that one I would consider a slam dunk. So a couple groans and then we'll move on to the next committee, which is the police committee and this being Commissioner Zeloff Knight. Uh, we'll recognize its chair, Commissioner Zeloff. Thank you, President Bernheim. I think it'd be better to be called the uh, Jerry Adams Knight. Congratulations on a well-deserved promotion. Um, there's one item on tonight's police committee agenda, uh, and that is for this committee to consider authorizing a conditional offer of employment for one police officer position. Uh, we will ask Captain Jean Pasternak to present this tonight. Hello. Um, <clears throat> right now we have uh, 11 vacancies down from our authorized strength of 136. Our current civil service list has only one eligible candidate remaining. Uh, we are requesting approval to give that candidate a conditional offer. Um, if they successfully complete their part two um, background section, uh, they would begin the academy this January. Uh, that would exhaust the list and this Saturday, we will begin written testing to establish uh, a new eligibility list. Thank you very, Thank you very much, much, Jean. Jean. Um, uh, it, it, uh, I'd like to ask you about the second, second comment, comment you made. So does that mean that the, mean window, the window, window for those, those who are interested in applying for the position of police officer in the township has closed? For Saturday's test, yes, it has closed. Okay. Thank you very much. Because uh, that window opens, it opens for a period of time every so often. It's not continuously open. No, because it has to be a civil service testing process. We, we had the application process open for about six weeks. Uh, the recruitment aspect is always uh, a project that's underway. We're, that's a constant effort. Um, we, we, we go to job fairs. We, we try to reach out to potential candidates. They can fill out interest cards and register and we will reach out to them when that process will open. But the actual application process opens for a short window. We conduct the written and the oral testing, and once everything's approved by civil service, then that eligibility list can last for up to two years. Great. Thank you very much. Do committee members have any questions or comments on this uh, police committee agenda item? Seeing none, do any members of the public have any comments on this item? Seeing none, I will move that the police committee recommend to the Board of Commissioners that the township manager be authorized to make a conditional offer of employment to one police applicant who has fulfilled the civil service commission, civil service requirements for eligibility. Do I have a second? Commissioner Grimes with a second. All those in favor, please so indicate by raising your hand. All those who wish to vote in, uh, to deny, please raise your hand. Any abstentions? Um, Madam Secretary, that item passes unanimously. Um, thank you, Captain Pasternak. Thank Before you. we adjourn the police committee, I would like to note and, and uh, highlight for committee members as well as the public that last Thursday in this room, uh, there was a promotional badge ceremony and an awards presentation. Uh, Sergeant John Kuvik was promoted to sergeant and uh, was sworn in uh, along with his family. Uh, you'll recall that this committee and the board approved the promotion of John Kuvik to sergeant. Uh, in addition to that, there were two awards given to um, police officers for exemplary service. The one uh, in, is occurred in which uh, there was a um, an arson of an uh, occupied residence. The police uh, formed a perimeter. They uh, apprehended the, uh, the suspects, two of them, and they were also arrested and charged with two armed robberies that had occurred earlier. The second award was given a uh, uh, commendation of merit to Officer Eric Curcio, who 
uh, with his training in de-escalation, uh, had to uh, talk effectively with uh, a, a resident who was armed and would not uh, drop his weapon. Uh, there was a number of police officers who were there in backup roles, but uh, uh, Officer Curcio was uh, very effective in using his training to uh, cause that uh, resident to eventually drop his weapon. It was, there was a very effective de-escalation, and of course it didn't make the news, and that's a very good thing, and a very, very important that we recognize uh, that kind of good police work, that kind of excellent police work in this township. Uh, and with that, um, that concludes the police committee for this evening, President Vermont. Well, thank you very much, and I appreciate you pointing that out to, uh, to everybody else. And uh, uh, we're going to soon welcome aboard another new officer who's got some uh, a high bar to a high bar to reach. That that brings us to the next item on our agenda, and that is our board of commissioners meeting. And I will uh, call the meeting to order and ask you all to be so kind to rise for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So, Madam Secretary, would you be so kind as to um, call the roll? Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Churchill. Here. Mr. Courtney. Present. Ms. Durbin. Here. Mr. Gavron. Present. Mr. Grimes. Present. Ms. Kramer. Here. Mr. McComb. Here. Mr. McKeon. Here. Ms. O'Neill. Here. Mr. Sinai. Present. Mr. Stevenson. Present. Mr. Whalen. Here. Mr. Zellow. Here. Mr. Bernheim. Present. Mr. President, we have a quorum. All right, thank you. But before we begin, um, the items we have on our agenda. I, it, I, I have some unfor unfortunate news. Um, as you all may recall, that uh, during the summer we, we lost two firefighters, one uh, Thomas Roy. His brother Robert, who was uh, an employee here at the township for quite some time, passed away on October 16. And uh, Bob had been with the refuse department of the township since 1994 and in 2001 was promoted as a refuge truck driver uh, in the recycling division of the Public Works Department. In 2001, Bob was recognized as uh, the Outstanding Refuse and Recycling Employee of the Year. And to add this tragedy to the family that's already had a, a tough time, I, I, I just can't imagine it. But I would ask you if you all be so kind that we could rise for a moment of silence at the memory of Robert Lloyd's Thank you. So the, the first item of business that we have then is to uh, approve our minutes of the stated meeting of the, of the board, which was held on September 29 as distributed. Do I have a second? Thank you, Vice President Gavrin. Any discussion or comment on that? All those in favor of approving the minutes, please raise your hand indicating your consent. Any objections, seeing none, the minutes are so approved. A couple of quick announcements. The board did meet in executive session on October 13 and earlier this evening to receive reports from our professional staff regarding some litigation matters, some personnel matters, uh, Lower Marion School District, uh, coronavirus, and 1400 Mill Creek Road. Also like to note that uh, Montgomery County will be sponsoring a household hazardous waste collection on Sunday, October 24 at the Township uh, Public Works Complex. Uh, Pre-registration is required. Information about the event can be found on the Township's website. Also, we have another Anything with a Plug event uh, forthcoming. Uh, that event will be on uh, Saturday, November 6, from 9 to 12, again at the Public Works Complex, which, by the way, is at 1300 North Woodbine Avenue. 
uh, information regarding disposal charges it can be found on the township website. Uh, the transfer station and scale house will be closed to residents and landscapers who want to drop off rescue or recycling at that point. That then brings us to the next section of our meeting, which is public privilege of the floor. This is where members of the public may address the board on any non-agenda items or other public matters uh, which the township has jurisdiction or authority. So uh, if, if there's anybody that would like to come forward, we'll go one at a time. And we ask that you limit your comments to three minutes. So we'll start to my right with the seltzer. Can I go in front of you? Hello, everyone. Adrian Seltzer, um, 705 Graythorn Road, Wynwood, Pennsylvania. Hello, everyone. I wanted to, I am one of the co founders of Stand Up for Lower Marine and Narbor. And one of our goals is to make it easy for people to get involved. And um, the current system that you have of having people having to remember by noon to get a Zoom link is, does not make it easy for people to remember. I'm somebody who is extremely involved in the community and I forget at times to get the Zoom link by 12 noon. So I think it is something that you should look at on having the Zoom link on your website. Now I understand that um, getting the Zoom link out, it puts a lot of extra pressure on our township secretary. So I might suggest that you look at budgeting for part-time help for her. We haven't had a tax increase in this township in 10 years. Maybe it is time to have some help for our township secretary and also our IT department, which finds it difficult to do things like, I wanted to like give my name to be on an email list to get the links to these meetings for each meeting each month. That somehow is not possible for our, your IT department. And I think it is things, these type of things are possible. It is also possible to use Zoom safely. They have made lots of improvements in the last year and change as far as security, countering Zoom bombing, and things like <coughs> this. So to have this, the, you can have, have people pre-register and um, I'm trying my hardest to get people to be involved. And I would really like your help in making it easier for that to happen. So we send out a newsletter every week with all the meetings, school board, civic, um, township, and all the subcommittee meetings. <laughs> Thank you for the roundup. And um, so I, I'm asking your help in helping me get people involved. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you can introduce yourself, please. Good evening, commissioners. My name is, and Council Residents, my name is Miriam Shapiro. Next to my driveway, I have an tr oak tree as old as the township. When I traded my car in two years ago, I lost $3,000 on the trade in value because of the damage to the car, specifically from the acorns hitting it. There was absolutely no other damage at all. To avoid any financial burden to the township and them refusing to cut a few branches back, I got a temporary canopy held down with sandbags to cover a portion of my driveway. The operative word here is temporary. Long story short, Shade Tree, Sean Marco, no relation to the famous Joe Manco, said it was two inches too big and to apply for a variance. Since the only reason he came out, as per him, was because a neighbor said she didn't like it. I knew the variance would not go through. He didn't deny it. The endeavor cost me almost $500. This year again, I called him to trim the branches back. That way, I could park closer to one side of my driveway than the other. He refused. I am the only one on both sides of my street that this is happening to, as well as the entire development. 
This has now cost me $3,500. I tried to compromise with the cutting of the branches back instead of off. As a resident in good standing, I have no other options or solutions. Please enlighten me and the township to what can be done. I cannot afford these high deductions for something that is not my fault. In fact, two of the branches that Sean said were healthy fell off my tree this weekend and landed in my driveway. Fortunately, I was out of town or they would have gone right through my car. Parking on the street is not an option. Two cars on two different days were totaled and damaged in front of my house, as well as mine. A landscaper making the turn at the corner had a tree fall off his truck and hit my car. In ending, please define for me the word temporary. Sean said temporary can mean one week, two weeks, three weeks, a month. The dictionary says lasting for a limited period of time, not permanent. In addition, I have been a resident of Lower Marion Township for 30 plus years. I have always paid my tax bills on time. It has sadly come to my attention that I am being financially taken advantage of and bullied by Treasurer Adenbaum. I had COVID-19 and a broken wrist when the real estate taxes came out in 2020. Someone was assigned to pay my incoming bills. I never received a tax notice until it was late and we're all aware of the mail issues. I am still under treatment now for residual effects of COVID-19 and one of them is memory loss and hearing. Everything stated here is documented with my medical team. Mr. Adenbaum insisted on charging me a late fee and was very rude and curt to me on the phone. A longtime friend of mine, the late Frank Bernstein, did a lot of work for the governor, as did his wife. He suggested I go to State Representative Madeline Dean before he approached the governor. I did this. I spoke with LaShonda in her office. She was treated as curt and rudely as I was, as per her. She agreed with me that to the best of her knowledge, no one in the department was penalized, knew of anyone being penalized for having COVID and its residual effects. At this point, Mr. Bernstein stated at his next meeting with the governor, either he or his wife, who was also very active, would bring the matter to his attention as they both felt the governor would stop, not stand for this type of treatment or the disrespect shown to LaShonda in the dean's office. Prior to this meeting, Denise passed away in August from ALS and sadly, suddenly, Frank passed away shortly thereafter. Both were 70 years old. They were both acknowledged at their funerals by the governor and by State Representative Dean as they were a huge loss to them and the Democratic Party. I am now requesting you again talk to Mr. Adenbaum because through my numerous conversations was told this is not legal and no one in any department anywhere in the state is aware of it happening to any other Pennsylvania residents before I contact the governor on my own. Mr. Adenbaum, again, August 2021. Can, I, left can I ask you to try to wrap up shortly, please? I'm trying to talk really fast. I'll yeah, talk I know, fast. I, know, I, I know, I understand. And I, I understand you want to express something to us, but. Okay. If you could, uh, we, I left we the country. I'm ahead. sorry. I left the country three days prior. Excuse me. I went on vacation three days prior to learning that my bank account had been emptied due to someone had stole, stolen all my identity. I was given a list of all the bounce checks. The school tax check was not among them. Long story short, Mr. Adenbaum insisted I had to pay the bill by August 31st or lose the discount, which I've paid for 40 years. I'm in th that I'm, and I'm entitled to. That's hard to do from another country. When I returned, I immediately had to borrow money, shift money, etc., so that I could meet the deadline of the next day after I got off the plane. He told me the school board told him he had to do this. This statement is totally inaccurate. Again, being bullied and taken advantage of by Mr. Adenbaum. And this really has to stop. All right, All right. Thank, thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to take the opportunity for public privilege on the floor? Leave anybody, please, sir. Yes. My name is Peter Groverman. I'm a resident of River Road. Uh, last year, I came. Uh, help make at least the area of River Road and Waverly a quiet zone. I have a petition uh, with over 100 signatures of owners in the community 
Since we last spoke, very little resistance to the idea. I've spoken with representatives from Northern Suffolk, the Public Utility Commission of Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. I've done a lot of research to turn our area into a quiet zone. Um, you know, in short, I, I need help. The next step is gonna be paying for how we do the conversion. There are real expenses fixed to turning the area into a quiet zone. Uh, anyone who's on, I guess, the finance committee or someone who can talk to me about uh, how to do it, I really would appreciate someone reaching out. I'm not sure with the protocol, uh, I can certainly send an email and, and, and fault myself. Uh, in short, it's about $400,000 to turn the area into a quiet zone. The uh, expense mainly is to put guardrails in place at the intersection of Waverly and River Road. These guardrails will act as a good security barrier. Uh, I don't know if the Everyone here that is aware, but in the last decade, there's been four accidents at that intersection, none of them fatal, but every day we see people try and beat the train because there are no rails. And uh, there's almost accidents. And the worst part about it is the trains lay down on their horns and it is beyond disruptive. In a 24 hour day cycle, sometimes five or six times, but no set time of when they lay down on the horn. We're talking two in the morning, four in the morning, six in the morning, there is no set time. And it's, uh, as a resident, it's incredibly concerning, not just for myself, but fun fact, we got a bald eagle family that lives on the river. I didn't know there were bald eagles in our township, but there are. And uh, that's only part of the wildlife that would benefit from helping convert our area into a quiet zone. Thank you for your time. I really am gonna continue pursuing this. You will hear from me again, but I would like someone's help in, in become, turning this idea into a reality. And we can be creative in how we come up with the funds. That Thank you, sir. I, you, we, I believe all do recall all your, your prior, prior appearance, appearance, albeit right now right in Zoom, now. you have frozen. There's another gentleman yeah. here to my right that wanted to speak. Yes. Please step forward to the podium. Thank you. Good evening. My name is John Packard. I represent the uh, neighborhood of Old Lancaster road and city avenue stoneway lane uh, we understand that there was a traffic study done a few years ago with a great cost to the taxpayer and they came up with the idea that old lancaster road would best be served with a a permanent left-hand turn lane onto city avenue and we don't disagree with that however the double line has been changed from edge hill to stoneway in such a way that now it is worse. Uh, the traffic. However, the line has been put in such a way that when people are parked legally on the Ballot Kinwood side of Old Lancaster, that they can't, a car cannot get between cannot pass, especially a bus or a truck, which happens on that road quite often. In fact, um, last week, 3.20 p.m., a school bus was coming out of Stoneway from the Marion side, could not make the turn because there were three cars parked illegally across the street. There were two cars parked illegally on the Marion side closer to uh, Dake's drugs. And a police officer saw all of this and he just continued and he was stuck in traffic. So I said, are you not going to give these people tickets? And his words were, hmm, are they? Words were, the township won't change the traffic pattern. I said, so you're not going to give tickets because the traffic pattern is, is not conducive to uh, giving tickets? I, I didn't quite understand. But it was the second time that I've heard that from a police officer. They are called on occasion because trucks trying to make that turn onto Old Lancaster from City Avenue now have in the no stopping, no standing zones, four signs in a row people are parking there in order to go to Al Sham or to go to Insomnia Cookies, and it is not a deterrent. So we're just asking for a couple of little things, and I think it's pretty smart. Rather than having no standing, no stopping, that, that's not a deterrent. 
How about no parking tow zone for those for that area across the street as well? We also ask that the double line from Edge Hill to Stoneway Lane be put back to the place it was before so that the traffic will flow exactly as it did before. And as soon as it crosses Stoneway Lane, it splits into two. And it makes a lot more sense. People can then get by from the uh, Balakinwood side as well. And we ask, I don't know how to do this, but uh, if the owner of the building that holds Al Sham, I think it's Peshkin is the name of the man. If he could put a sign on the common drive that goes back to the Wendy's, we call it the Wendy's parking lot, but it's actually closer to old Lancaster. If you could put a sign there, maybe a big finger pointing free parking for Al Sham customers and, and insomnia, because a sign on the door is not doing the trick. That's really it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody else who would like to take the opportunity for public privilege of the floor? Please step up. I'm Mrs. Packard. Um, we live in the same house and observe this situation all day and late into the night. It has caused a deterioration of our enjoyment of life in the neighborhood. And we are offended that our concerns are not taken seriously, particularly the illegal parking. My husband feels, and I do too, what is the point of having rules if they are not going to be enforced? No one seems to care about the parking lot. We listen late into the night to the chirping, to the music, to the conversations. And I understand that commercial businesses draw people who talk. And that often happens late into the night, but not the illegal parking. If they would just avail themselves of the free parking lot, I think it would help to calm things down. We don't mind picking up the trash, which is daily. We, have, we do not want to live in a trash strewn neighborhood, but we really would like people to abide by the regulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who has a new topic that they would like to discuss on public privilege? Because well, gen generally, just so you know, if this is a repeat of what we've heard, we ask people to appoint one person. I think that the point that you all wish to raise have been raised extraordinarily well that we get it. So um, that's all right. Anybody else have something else for us? Um, if you're you're holding up something, Ms. Seltzer, you know, I, I don't know what that is. But you're, you're, then I, you, we're not we're not doing this for ma'am. Do you have something you'd like to present? Please. And also um, to our township staff and Jody Bell, all for what you do. For I know you have the arduous test. I can't hear. Are you hear me now? Go ahead. Better. Okay, I'll try to sort of speak loudly. We know you have the arduous task of formulating and implementing with the Environmental Advisory Committee a sustainability program that will, that will decrease greenhouse gas, gas emissions to preserve our world as we know it. Our heart and prayers are with you as you embark on that journey. We support you in that task. I'm here on behalf of Calm. Climate Action Lower Marion to advocate for the ban on gas powered leaf blowers. Folks in our group are writing lawn coup. It's poetry in the form of haiku on the subject of gas powered leaf blower equipment. I'll share two lawn coup with you. High octane landscapes, where has all the fresh air gone? Breathing gasoline. Second one, sunny day open windows, blast from gas powered equipment. 
perfect lawn must be. Thank you. Thank, thank you very, thank much. very much. Anybody, anybody else uh, who wishes to come forward during public privilege? Seeing none, are there any members of the board that would, oh, I spoke too soon. Good evening, Please. commissioners, and um, I'm Deborah Robbins from uh, 1850 Stone Ridge Lane, Deborah, Villanova. Can you speak more into the microphone, please? Thank you very much. Deborah Robbins, 1850 Stone Ridge Lane, Villanova. And I'm here um, actually um, just as a, a buzz in your ear as usual that um, neighbors as well as uh, at least 2,000 people in the community are still um, advocating for the preservation of the um, uh, 13 acres of ancient trees next to um, the middle school. And um, I understand that this is kind of uh, in suspended animation and uh, sort of not in your ballpark right now, but I want to actually say thank you to those of you who have advocated and made efforts on the behalf of people who are looking for alternatives. I'm very grateful and I hope that this effort can be sustained and that we can uh, get this done on the same principles. The health of the world is at stake here. There was a new uh, article out in the Lancet today describing uh, just how catastrophic this is. And even though we're 3,000 miles away from the fires where people are suffering illness from the smoke, um, people are suicidal from the rain, it goes on and on. You understand, but I just want to say thank you very much. Your your efforts are definitely appreciated. Thank thank you. I will try them one more time. Going once, going twice. Sold on uh, public privilege. Are there any members of the board that would like to make comments in reference to that which we just heard this evening? Uh, yes, Commissioner Grimes. Um, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to respond to uh, Mr. Groverman, who uh, brought up the issue of the quiet zone on River Road, um, and to let him and others know that certainly I and other members of the board have heard him previously. And um, in response, um, in our proposed capital improvement plan for that we're going to be considering in the fall, there is a uh, capital outlay proposed for the out years of the capital budget for this quiet zone. I believe it's it's not for until maybe 2026, but this is a, a new idea that was proposed to us um, uh, in the last few months. I would note, as he said, that the cost is significant for this. As he said, it's estimated about $4,000, and that's in today's money. 400,000, um, $400, I wish it was 4,000. Um, but about $400,000 and then about $10,000 a year in maintenance costs. Um, and uh, I have encouraged township staff to pursue whether grants might be available to pay some of that cost. I will note that other communities who have done, that have done this have done it through largely through grants. Uh, and there haven't been many in Pennsylvania who have done it. So, um, I, I would just point that out that thanks to his uh, pursuing this, uh, it is something that we'll be taking up um, as part of the capital improvement plan. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else who wishes to make comment? Yes, Commissioner Sinai. Uh, thank you, President Bernheim. And and uh, I think really I, I want to address the comments by the Packers. Uh, and really, uh, Commissioner McCombs should be doing this uh, in Ward 9. He is outside talking to his constituents, so I'll pick up. I see him coming back. I guess he'll go after me. Um, uh, 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 the intersection of Old Lancaster and City Avenue is a, is a tremendous problem. Uh, as I said, it's in Commissioner in, the, in Ward 9. I'm in Ward 12. Uh, ward 12 goes right up to Ward 9, and a number of my residents use that street uh, daily. Uh, it is certainly at least once a week, usually more. I get a story that's similar to what the Packers relayed tonight. Uh, it's a tremendous problem. Um, it's one that it's difficult to solve. Um, for those of you who are, who are fans of the show BattleBots, there's a point where there's these, these posts that come out of the ground and throw the robots into the air. And I suggested that for the illegal parking of that intersection. And the LMPD did not, did not agree with me. 
Um, but, uh, and then spikes were, were, were said uh, not a good idea. But, but you know, we have illegal parking, a tough intersection. It's, uh, 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 and it, it's difficult to continually enforce. Um, so, so my understanding is that uh, the, the township, the engineers taking a new look at this, at that intersection. Um, uh, hopefully we can get a solution. Uh, I know Commissioner McComb is working very hard on a solution. I know the police department's working very hard on a solution. Uh, and and uh, it's a problem. Hopefully we can get there uh, in, in a less violent way than I suggested. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Commissioner Vaughn. Uh, thank yes, you, President Vaughn. Um, I wanted to thank the Packers. I stepped out briefly just to thank them for appearing, but that intersection is a huge problem. And I've experienced it because you have illegal parking in front of Insomnia and illegal parking in front of Al Sham. It's a it, it's a, a log jam. And I was pulling off of City Avenue onto Old Lancaster. People were parked illegally. A bus was coming down, and I was stuck with the tail end of my car out on City Avenue, where people go very very fast. So I've relayed their complaints to the Township Police Department, uh, Traffic Safety, and they're looking at it. But it's an ongoing issue, and I agree with uh, Commissioner Sinai that enforcement should be stepped up rather than relaxed because. I don't think the no parking, even though there are four no parking signs on the, the battle side and four on the Marin side, nobody's paying any attention to it. And there are people out there at all hours of the night parked illegally at its map. So we're working on it. And I appreciate people bringing it forward because it's important. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else who wishes to, to make a comment? I, I seeing none, I, I just uh, wanted to point out uh, um, and I, I apologize. Um, I did not jot down her name. Who made ref the woman who made reference to the trees of the middle school and some efforts to look for alternatives? And I just wanted to give a nod to the gentleman to my left, Vice President Gavin, who has been working tirelessly in order to figure out, you know, what else could be done, uh, and has not not stopped at that that endeavor. With that, we will move then to the next uh, section of our meeting. And that's public comment. And this is an opportunity for people to address the board for items which are on our agenda. So is there anybody who wishes to come forward in for a public comment? Anybody uh, in Zoom world? Okay. Right. So. Seeing none, then that will close that section. And that then brings us to our consent calendar. Um, and this, I will we'll move for, the approval of the consent calendar, which will include items from our meetings earlier this evening, the Finance, Administrative, and Human Resources, and the Police Committee. Uh, before we make that vote, does anybody wish to remove anything from the consent calendar? Remove? Yes, please. Thank you. The uh, that would be the the street tree the street tree planting contract uh, from the Finance Committee, please. Um, all right. So with that item being removed from consent, um, I then will, will ask that uh, we then have to move to approve the consent calendar absent. I'm just trying to pull up the specific. As amended. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. So uh, approval of the consent calendar as amended, then, if we can get all those in favor to raise your hand indicating your approval. Any objections? Seeing none. And that then leads us to our one last item, which is then the item that was just moved, and that is to award the, of the contract for tree planting at various township locations. Uh, I will then make the motion for uh, recommendation to the board for approval of, of the contract award, which we heard about, which is the J, I'll probably mispronounce this, and I apologize. Margerson Landscaping uh, for a bid of $35,000. I'll ask for a second, and then Commissioner O'Neill, you can have your opportunity to comment. Do a second on that. Thank you, Commissioner Zella. Commissioner O'Neill. Thank you, President Bernheim, very much. Um, in review of the, um, the bid, the, the tabulation, I see that there are a couple of trees that remain on this list that were actually uh, removed from uh, the list as as given to us by Shade Tree Commission. And so there are some consistencies which are fine, but in keeping with the Shade Tree Commission's most recent recommendations, I would like to make sure that the sawtooth oaks 
hedge maples and um, rosebuds as a species be removed from the list and substituted with trees that are um, more in the, with in keeping with what J Tree has suggested to us in the most recent version. Um, the, re the reason this is important is some of the, this is based on an old list. And so we know now from an, a revised list from Shade Tree that there are trees here listed that are actually invasive. And we're trying really hard um, to make sure that we're planting properly the best trees in the best location. So this I see is a very minor change. And I understand that uh, Joe Marco and um, Eric could probably very easily substitute out trees that are going to be roughly the same price in the $350 per unit range. Um, but I would just like to make sure that that is ordained as such, please. So I guess that's my motion, is to substitute out those three types. I'm happy to- I'm not, Our manager can comment on that. Yeah, the contract was bid right. as it's shown here on the agenda. Um, the only way we can change them out now is a change order after the fact once the contract's been awarded. Um, we don't know whether there's a replacement tree that uh, is the same price. So we have to go back to the contractor. We have to figure out what it is you wanna replace those with. And then, and then we have to get a price for that. And then we'd have to execute a change order. But you don't do that at the uh, contract award. So, you know, we can, we can carry the desire to, to make that happen once the contract is awarded, but we don't have enough information to do it here tonight. Mr. Uh, if, I, if I may I follow up with Ernie, because there's, if there's a discrepancy between the recommendations of the Shade Tree Commission and what we bid, yeah. right? We, 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 should, we should understand that. Uh, but if, if we bid out more trees or more types of trees than Shade Tree recommended, um, this is not an obligation. Is this an obligation to buy them or this is just the price per planting per tree? And we could reduce the, number, the, the variety of trees on this list when we actually go to plant. So they're charging us 350 bucks a tree and we could simply Before choose not to right. plant the, the varieties that are that are not the shade tree commissions list right if we want to switch to another one of the ones that are on the list but we don't know what what it is you want to switch to okay so, so this is like why. when we do paving we have a price for asphalt we have a price for you know aggregate and we just don't know how much we're going to use right. this is a price mm -hmm. per kind of tree okay so right. so so certainly uh, uh hopefully we could let the shade tree division know that they should stick to the trees or unchange trees list. That'd probably be a good thing. Thank you. I mean, I guess if, in that case, I'm happy to. Um, however, so I'm glad to have taken it off the consent because the conversation is an important one to have. That we do need to be consistent with what our advisory committees are telling us to do when it makes sense to do it. Um, this list may be benign, except for the few that we know are highly invasive, and um, you know where we're really putting in a lot of capital budget monies to deal with our invasives and we don't want to go backwards. And this is a, in my opinion, with the utmost respect is a, a motion backwards. Like we're, we're not thinking forward whenever we put forward a list on a bid that is not consistent with what our advisory committee boards are saying. So it, it, if I may, because technically what we would have done, there is the, the motion on the floor for the awarding the contract as it's here. And in essence, you were looking for, for an amendment, which having made the motion, I would say would not be a friendly amendment. But at this point, um, you are withdrawing that with the understanding it's going to be brought to the attention of the contractor, the exact issues that you've raised. And on a go forward basis, uh, we will sort of double our, our efforts to see that recommendations from the Shade Tree Commission are baked into these awards as they go out. Thank That's you. fair? Correct. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Zoll. Uh, President Bernheim, um, I agree with what you just said, but I'd like to ask uh, our manager to take it a step further and report to the board by email at some point in the future or whatever means is appropriate for communicating. What happened? How, how can there be a shade tree recommendation and a bid spec that is different? You don't have to answer it now, but. I don't know. Right. Yeah, right. So we, I think we'd like to know because we want to make sure that the, uh, what, um, Commissioner O'Neill has highlighted, if indeed that's true, why did this occur? Like there are a lot of, lot of possibilities. Maybe somebody agreed, disagreed, consulted with Shakespeare, but your point is let, let's, yeah. um, 
Let, let's figure that out. That makes sense. So with that being said, the motion is still on the floor to uh, recommend to the board then, or actually it's now at the board level uh, for the approval of this contract. I'd like to call the vote and ask that all those who are in favor, raise their hands, say aye, aye. I'll, I'll second it if there are already. Fair enough, very good. Thank you very much. I think that was done, but nevertheless, <laughs> all, right, and, any objections? No votes, seeing none, it therefore then uh, it is passed. That, believe it or not, actually uh, includes the heart of our, our business for, for this evening. So I would ask, you know, before we get to the moment to adjourn, if anybody has any new business they wish to bring up. Seeing none, I just want to point out that um, we, we need to give uh, some birthday wishes to LMTV. This happens to be their 30th year um, on air this month. So we uh, congratulate them for, for doing that. And um, it was just uh, pointed out to me by Commissioner Zell, might not be a bad idea to note that uh, November 2 is election day. So we all may want, want to remember that. And with that, unless anybody has anything else, I thank you all for your hard work this evening and wish you a good night. We are hereby adjourned.